virgin baby. Well, that's what they teach you. Go ahead, mm-hmm. me. She and her son Jesus were therefore both born without the taunt, without the taint of original sin. Uh-huh. The only human beings ever so born. The, the assumption of the virgin is the most recent dogma proclaimed with reference to the Virgin Mary. It was issued in... Now, the assumption, that means that she'll send it up to heaven mm-hmm. after... Well, well, I guess they're saying she didn't really die, but go ahead. But that's, that's what assumption means, she'll send it up to heaven after death or whatever. Go ahead, read. It was issued in 1950. Now, they, they issued this in 1950. I was around then. Go ahead, read. And is in the line with the earlier dogma uh-huh. of the Immaculate Conception. Go ahead. By which Mary was is exempted from original sin. Uh-huh. Her body was therefore not subject to corruption in the grave. Oh, so, you know, I guess they put it in there. <laughs> but, you know, like Jesus was only in there three days and three nights and didn't have time to see corruption. And then he was uh, raised from the dead and he ascended up to the fire. So I guess that's what they saying happened with her. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Her assumption into heaven, both body and soul, uh-huh. was equivalent to the resurrection from the dead in the case of Jesus. Go ahead. Since her assumption to heaven, which occurred at her death, according to according to the dogma, mm-hmm. the Virgin Mary has sat in splendor in splendor as a queen, as the, at the right hand of her son, the immortal King of the ages. So that's why they call the Queen of Heaven now. So now she's supposed to be sitting up there on the right hand. But look here, uh, uh, Mary died. Mary's still in the grave. Make no mistake about it. That's mm-hmm. the teaching of the Bible. Go ahead, read on. He said, these last two dogmas, uh-huh. the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption of the Virgin, uh-huh. illustrate the Catholic view of the authority of the church, since neither of these dogmas is clearly articulated in the scriptures. That is <laughs> you can't support it by scripture. You understand what I'm saying? Again, it's something that they came up with. But then all of the people that believed them, that, that was a part of that, they believed this. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, it, it's, Now, we got to get back to what I really wanted to deal with, and that was on page uh, uh, 292, and that was dealing with the uh, celibacy. Now, go ahead and read that. The celibacy, celibacy. and monotheism. Uh-huh. The Catholic Church requires all its clergy, except those of Eastern rites, from the rank of subdeacon up uh-huh. to practice celibacy. So, now, they say they supposed to practice. But they, it, ain't, it ain't the word of God either, is it? Nope. You know, it didn't matter if you were a priest or whatever you were. The Lord said, a high priest, you can marry. Just get this kind of woman. Regular priest, you marry. But just get this kind of woman. But now the Catholic came along and they said, if you're a priest, then you can't marry. Go ahead, read. They take a solemn vow to live a life of perfect chastity. Uh-huh. This practice is based But it ain't perfect chastity. That, that's been discovered in the news a lot lately yeah. in the past few years, isn't it? It ain't no perfect chastity, is it? Mm-hmm. Pedophilia, that's more like what it is. <laughs> Every time you look around, they got one on trial because he's messing with some little boy. Go ahead and read. This practice is based in part on the teaching of Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 32. They try 32. to use scripture. They say, well, you know, uh, uh, we, uh, we got scripture to support this. Now, we're going to find out. No, they don't. But they say, you know, we we, we saying that this, this is how it's supposed to be. Because of what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 7 chapter, and we're going to go and read that in a little while. Go ahead, read. Verses 32 and 33, uh-huh. where he expresses the view that both men and women who are free of family anxieties uh-huh. are able to devote, to, to devote themselves more fully to the service of God. Uh-huh. Jesus himself, in Matthew 19 and 12, notes with apparent approval the fact that some persons Practice celibacy for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Now read what else is on the line. It says, at the Lutheran Council uh-huh. in 1139, Go ahead. marriage of the higher cler- clergy was made unlawful and declared invalid. So now, God's highest clergy, he didn't say they couldn't marry, did he? Right. So now this is something they came up with, isn't it? Let's go, and they try to use some scripture to support. Let's go first to, uh, so they try to use First Corinthians chapter 7. And verses 32 and 33, let's go and read that. But we're going to read some more of this 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and show you what Paul really said. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we'll begin reading at verse 32. 7 and 32. They didn't do that. They just read 32 and 33. We're going to read that, but we're going to read what else is said too. Start reading at 32. Go ahead and read. But I will have you without, 
carefulness. Uh -huh. He that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, uh -huh. how he may please the Lord. But he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. And that is really how it's supposed to be. You know, man got a wife, man, he got a supposed to shine, man. That's how it's supposed to be. And Paul was saying, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't choose to have a wife, you know, because I wanted to devote myself to the Lord. But well, there wasn't nothing wrong with marriage because, uh, you know, what, who the Pope's supposed to be a succession of who, Peter? Mm -hmm. Didn't choose to have a wife. Yep. Thank you very much. And Paul even told you, he said, I got the power to lead a woman around too, but I just don't choose to do it because I just want to give all my attention to the word of God. So now, he is supposed to have been the first Pope. Then why did he have a wife? If, if the Pope's in the higher how a uh, uh, priesthood is not supposed to marry. But let's go, let's back up now, show you what Paul really said here. Start reading at 7 and 1. Go ahead and read. They should have read this. Instead of reading verse 32 and 33, they should have read this too. Verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now concerning, concerning the things where he wrote unto me, mm -hmm. it is good for a man not to touch a woman. They say it's good for a man not to touch a woman. <laughs> but go ahead and read. Nevertheless, but nevertheless, go ahead and read. To avoid fornication, uh -huh. let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. He says it's good for him not to, because as he said in verses 32 and 33, man, if he don't have one, well, he can give all his attention to the word. But however, if he can't keep himself to avoid fornication, let him marry. Mm -hmm. Skip down to uh, 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 verse uh Verse 8 now. Go ahead and read. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, uh -huh. it is good for them if they abide even as I. Go ahead. But if they cannot contain. They said, but now if they can't contain themselves, go ahead and read. Let them marry. Read. For it, is marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So now did he say that you ain't supposed to have no wife? All he was saying, uh, he said it's good if he don't have one. Because mm -hmm. then he can give all his attention to the word of God. However, if he can't keep himself, then let him marry. That's what he really said here, but they didn't bother to read that part because they're trying to support that doctrine of celibacy of the priest. But that is not the word of God, is it? Mm -hmm. Let's go and read what Jesus said now because they quoted Jesus as well. Let's go to Matthew 19, and we'll begin at verse 1. We got two more scriptures after this, and then you're out of here. Matthew 19, and we'll begin at verse 1. 19 and 1. 19. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee uh -huh. and came into the coast of Judea uh -huh. beyond Jordan. Go ahead. And great multitudes followed him, uh -huh. and he healed them there. Uh -huh. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is, this, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Uh -huh. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning male? made them male and female, uh -huh. and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Uh -huh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Go ahead. They say, they say unto him, what, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, uh -huh. and to put her away? Go ahead. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. He said from the beginning, it was not. Moses caused the hardness of it. So they were, you know, they, they just wore him out with it. And, you know, this, this woman, she this and she ain't that and she ain't this and she don't do that and she don't do that. You know, Moses just got tired of listening to her. Y'all put the woman away, man. Just write her up the deal of boys. Get out of my face. I'm tired of listening to you. Go ahead and read <laughs> So that, that's what they want to do. They were looking for a way to, but, it, but Jesus said from the beginning, it was never so. And he's going to tell you the only reason that a, 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 a man could put away his wife. Go ahead, read. I say unto you, Go ahead. whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Now that is the only reason that God gives, either death or fornication. Go ahead, read. And shall marry another, uh -huh. commit of adultery. Go ahead. And whoso marry her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Go ahead. His disciples say unto him, 